There's a player in this game who is far more skilled than me. He has absolutely smashed every goal he has set for himself and he continues to amaze many. He started to rise and make a name for himself in early 2019 and has been proving himself to be one of the greatest players this game has ever seen. Known by many, his name is Enswish. Just like Minecrafted, his channel's oldest video is almost a year older than when his channel was created, so we can assume that he has videos that were made before his oldest, which is in 2017. So going by this, Enswish's first upload that is visible is his first Extreme Demon beaten in 2.0 which is Cataclysm. He beat the level in 7,000 attempts and says that it is actually quite fun to beat. The beginning of the video starts out with a 55 second intro. I'm not sure if this intro is a joke or not, but have a look for yourself. Yeah. Shit, no! Not again! No! Version 2.1 would be released for Geometry Dash 9 days after his Cataclysm video, but there wouldn't be any videos from Enswish for a couple of months. But when he came back to uploading 8 months later, the upload would be another Extreme Demon being the ultimate phase. He called the level a Medium Demon when he completed it, and it was his first Extreme Demon of the new update. He doesn't actually show his attempts in the video, and it's not in the description or comment section, so I don't actually know how many attempts it took him, but it couldn't have been many of them. A week after the ultimate phase, he'd be bloodbath by Riot. The level took him 9,000 attempts. He says in the description of the video that he wants to go for Aftermath next, and then Glowy, but he won't be Glowy for a while. After completing Aftermath, no more Extreme Demons would be beaten for around 3 months. He uploaded a layout of his, and two levels of his as well. He also started making Sonic Wave progress in October of 2017. A little over a month after his Sonic Wave progress video, he uploaded an unfinished collab layout and also beat Flat Major in the same day. He also changed his name to Enish. But two weeks later, he would beat another extreme demon. But no one had beaten this level or even knew what it was, because it was actually a level of his own. He beat his own level, Photonic Wave, on December 19th, 2017, in a little under 6,700 attempts. He made the level for Spectex's second creator contest. Does the level still look good for being nearly three years old? Let's see.
Oh my god, I can't believe it! Let's go! Whoa! Yee! A rather interesting reaction. Obviously, it's not the best level, but it's something. On the first day of January, he would beat Sonic Wave two months after he uploaded a progress video for it. Just listen to this reaction. If you count Photonic Wave, he had beaten six extreme demons with not only a near minimal amount of effort, but also all within about a year. That might not sound like much now, but for 2017, that was definitely impressive. Was he the best player at the time? No. But was he climbing his way to the top? Of course. After Sonic Wave, he uploaded a challenge he made and another layout of his. Let's take a look at both. Yes! That's called... Skill! Okay. Even this looks like it's starting to age in difficulty. This level has no name as far as I can tell, but he said that this is an innard styled level. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. This level's length in this video is only 45 seconds, and the level will probably never be finished. He followed up a month later by beating Niflheim, fluking it from 56. He beat the level in 2,000 attempts, no problem. He didn't upload after this for about 4 months. When he came back, he uploaded a layout for a collab and some other stuff. The videos are still on his channel if you're interested in looking at them. Almost a month after that, changing his name from Enish to Enswish, he beat AT Marble by Penito in 769 attempts. Golden, the verifier, took over 8,000. That's just insane. But there's one thing worth noting about Enswish's completion. He used what's known as the FPS Bypass. The FPS Bypass is part of the Mega Hack by Absolute Gamer, and using it allows you to simulate a higher refresh rate, thus making the game easier. The Demon List obviously doesn't allow records beaten with the Bypass, since it is a form of hack. But regardless of if you use the FPS Bypass or not, AT Marble seemed to come naturally. According to Enswish, it's his favorite extreme demon. He likes this level so much, in fact, that he actually rebeat the level two months ago just because he likes it so much. The level is just so fun for him. After AT Marble, he uploaded progress videos on other extremes, more layouts, collab parts, and challenges. He also beat Have a Drink by Penito in the midst of all of it. He also beat Bath by Pinoteau without recording, though. About a week after that, he beat Zafkiel by Darwin. He had dropped the level nine months before, but decided to pick the level back up and beat it in 600 attempts. Pretty impressive. He would also beat Artificial Dream by Virus in the same day. The level took him around 700 attempts to beat. Which, while the level is on the team side of an extreme demon, getting under a thousand attempts is still impressive to many. After Artificial Dream, he uploaded another collab video. But after that, he beat Generic Wave by Penito. He beat the level in a little over 4,000 attempts. He says that it's easier than Sonic Wave, and the majority seems to agree. He would have been the first victor of the level, but like many extreme demons that he'll go on to beat, he used the FPS Bypass. As I mentioned earlier in the video, records beaten using the Bypass are not accepted. Therefore, you can't get list points. Enswish didn't really mind all that much, so this wouldn't really affect anything. For a little over a week after Generic Wave, he uploaded progress on Audio Expulsion and also beat two insane demons, being Obama Rebirth and Frizzantino Vibes, before beating another extreme demon. Two days after beating Frizzantino Vibes, he would beat another extreme demon, being Incipient by Jenkins in 580 attempts, which is a crazy low amount of attempts. 
After Incipient, he made some progress on Wave World, which is Red World Rebirth by Riot, but the only game mode is Wave, and also uploaded a collab part. He would then go on to beat a couple of easier extreme demons. He also got one of the craziest flukes for an extreme demon, fluking Fexty by Ospectra from 17%. No way, no way, no way! I just fluked from the first cube! Oh my god! Oh my god! Three days later, he would beat something a little harder than Fexty, beating Athanatos in about 4,200 attempts. Shorter levels like Athanatos seem to be really easy for him. A day after beating Athanatos, he would beat Heatwave by Nico99 in 1,200 attempts. A week later, he would beat a level much harder than Heatwave. Enswish beat Plasma Pulse Finale on December 1st, 2018 in around 13,000 attempts. This was also at around the time that he hit 500 subscribers as well. Eight days after beating Plasma Pulse Finale, he beat a level that he had wanted to beat after Aftermath over a year ago. He beat Glowy by Rob Buck on December 9th in around 8,000 attempts. He followed this up with Breakout Redux a day later in a little over 3,700 attempts. After Breakout Redux, he would beat Epic Style Despacito by Metal Face and then a challenge level before beating another top 3. On December 27th, 2018, Enswish beat Bloodlust by Nobleboy in a little over 10,000 attempts. He describes his situation with the level pretty well in the description of the video. You can pause to read if you want. And then, just three days after beating Bloodlust, he beat Spatial Rend, taking him around 5,700 attempts. With Spatial Rend being completed, Enswish had beaten the top three hardest demons at the time. He wouldn't get the list points for Bloodlust, Spatial Rend, or Plasma Pulse Finale though. But regardless, it was a great achievement, and by no means was it an easy task. Following the new year, after beating the top three, he slowed down from beating the hardest levels and went back to beating more tame extremes, like Auditory Breaker and Spectral Temptation. With each of the levels taking him 400 attempts and 2,100 attempts respectively. He would also beat Unearthed by Jakob Nugget as well as a Wave Challenge a little over a week later, with Unearthed taking him 986 attempts to complete. Three days after beating Unearthed, he would follow that up with Epsilon by Team Proxima getting a crazy fluke on the level. No fucking way. There's no way I did that. I'm so anxious right now. What the fuck? I just fluked that from 42. From 42, motherfuckers. 1,517 attempts for this. Epic. After that crazy fluke, he would beat a bunch of easy extreme demons every day for about a month. The number reached 12 before he beat Gamma by Minecap on February 12th, in somewhere in between 6 to 8k attempts. Beating Gamma, he now not only had the top 3 complete, but now he had the top 5 complete. His achievements were only becoming more and more impressive. Then, on February 15th and 16th, he beat Yadagarasu and Erebus. Now, he not only had the top 7 hardest extremes completed, but he now also had the RGB trio done, which consists of Yadagarasu, Erebus, and Sonic Wave. Yadagarasu took him around 20,000 attempts, and Erebus took him 5,000. By this point, Enswish had completed over 40 extreme demons, which is just unreal. A day after beating Erebus, he started making progress on Devil Vortex, getting 83% on the level within the first day of playing. He played the level for about three days straight until he beat it. Yes! Let's go! Ah! I can't believe it! Let's go! Let's go, gamers! Aussie moment! Holy fucking hell! That took so many freaking attempts since 87! After beating Devil Vortex, he quickly made progress on Celestial Force by Minecap and beat it within a little over a day of progress, in around 11,000 attempts. Now with Celestial Force completed, he had the entire top 10 completed. You can probably see where this is going. 
After Celestial Force, he verified Rage, a collab made by XGen26 and others. He also beat Time Complex and Asmodeus afterwards. This was also around the time that he started practicing Zodiac, which had recently been verified by Xander, dethroning Bloodlust for the new number one hardest demon in the game. He later beat Innards by Kaido, Singularity by Bionox, and Paroxysm by Lemons. Not sure how many attempts Innards took him, but it took him 1,173 attempts to beat Singularity and about 5,000 on Paroxysm. He would get 62% on Zodiac four days after Paroxysm as well. We won't see much Zodiac progress for a while after that. He continued to just steamroll the top 100, beating an extreme demon left and right, with Temple of Destiny being his 50th extreme demon. 50 of them. August 23rd, 2019. WoW had just been verified by Napesta, and InSwish quickly uploaded progression on the level, getting 18 to 58, 18 to 83, 59, and then finally beating it in three days. The level took him barely over 5,400 attempts to complete, and he thought it would have taken him longer to complete. And then, over a week after completing WoW, he beat Kawarada by Shuri. He beat the level in somewhere around 23,000 attempts, and it's also now his hardest demon without using the FPS bypass. He says that the level is pretty overrated though, but after Kawarada, he slowed down a bit. But 17 days later, he made another upload, beating Crimson Planet by True Omega. He started practicing this level a year ago, but only came back now to beat it, taking him 23,000 attempts. A couple weeks after Crimson Planet, he beat some other easier extremes for a while. Thank fucking god that didn't take very long today. You have no idea how unlucky I was with this. My heart is beating so fucking fast right now. But then, out of nowhere. We already knew that he had progress in Zodiac, but this was a little bit unexpected, since he was beating everything but Zodiac for about three months. And if it wasn't obvious enough, Inswish had a goal in mind. He didn't want to have the top 5 done, not the top 10, not the top 15. He wanted to have the top 25 under his belt. Inswish was already one of the best players, if not the best player in the game at this point, so it was only a matter of time before that goal would be accomplished. Shifting gears, four days after getting 97% on Zodiac, He finally completed the level in about 25,000 attempts. He said that when he first got a copy of the level, he thought that no one would ever beat it. He would once again prove himself to be wrong, beating the level that he thought that no one would ever beat. He also now had the top 3 completed again, since Zodiac became the new number 1. Now you would think that he would probably sit back for a little bit, but since he's Enswish, that was not the case whatsoever. Just four days after completing Zodiac, he completed yet another top 10 extreme demon, Lucid Nightmares by Kyra X, in 11,700 attempts. He got really unlucky though, dying on the second half literally hundreds of times. But regardless, he maintained his composure and completed the level. Not even a week after beating Lucid Nightmares, he beat Deimos, just four days after beating Lucid Nightmares. Taking 4,800 attempts, even he was blown away by the fact that he had beat the level in only four days. 
and upon completing the level, he had the top 5 done again as well. And then, just 2 days later, he beat another top 10, beating Arctic Lights in just under 8,900 attempts. And if that wasn't enough, he then went on to beat Hyper Paracosm, Visible Ray, Sigma, Ouroboros, Ragnarok, and the Yandere. It's already really obvious just how impressive and talented Inswish is, but let's put this into perspective. After beating the Yandere, Inswish has finally achieved his goal of beating the entire top 25, also being the first player in Geometry Dash history to have done such a thing. And on top of that, he has beaten a total of 77 Extreme Demons. That is a ridiculous number. It can't even be fathomed into words how impressive this really is. After the Yandere, he once again returned to steamrolling the top 100. He was also beginning to rebeat Extreme Demons for list points. He also picked up a new verification project that he would then verify about a week after he was given the level. Cognition took him about 22,200 attempts to verify. After Cognition was verified, he once again returned to doing none other than steamrolling every Extreme Demon in existence, just beating tons and tons of stuff. And on November 11th, 2019, Inswish would reach an absolutely phenomenal milestone. This might not seem like much, but Inswish completing Ithacropolis would mark his 100th Extreme Demon completed. 100 of them. It's really hard to realize just what an absolutely speechless achievement this really is. I don't think many players will ever do what Inswish did. After beating Ithacropolis, he beat 13 more Extreme Demons before starting work on a level that had recently been verified by Nepesta. Just 9 days after it was verified by Nepesta, Inswish completed Kenos in 10,671 attempts. You can pause to read his description if you want. Five days after completing Kenos, he would follow it up by beating Renovin by Nykerdox in 10,566 attempts. And then another five days go by, and he beats Calculator Core by Walrus and others, with quite possibly the best reaction anyone's given to the level. Imagine the nerve. I beat it, let's go. This is a stupid attempt. Fuck. After Calculator Core, he would beat the level that Calculator Core was built off of, beating Artificial Ideology by Team Enten. A couple weeks pass, and Inswish gets another verification project. He verified Eternal Moment by Rainstorm and others on February 4th, taking a little under a month to verify it. He also beat Scraw by Virtual Crack three days before that. Right after verifying Eternal Moment, he gets yet another verification project called Kappa by Armadus and others. He uploaded getting 50 to 100 five days after verifying Eternal Moment, then getting 87, and then verifying the level four days later. After verifying Kappa, he would get another verification project, but this one is one of the most anticipated ones yet. He quickly starts working on the Golden, making a handful of progression in the first couple of days, before stopping to rebeat Bloodlust for list points. He also beats Exo and Blingu Vortex before making more progress. But then, while verifying the Golden on the side,
Let's go. Yes! Oh my god, finally, dude. Oh. After beating Tortoise, he made some more progress on the Golden, while also balancing the level out to be leaning more towards top 3 difficulty instead of being top 1. Now sitting at 16,900 subscribers, Inswish has done more than made a name for himself. He has established himself as one of the best players, if not the best player in the entire game. At his current pace, he can probably verify any level that's given to him, and he has an amazing future ahead of him. And that? has been the history of Enswish. Thanks for watching.